Welcome to this video on citing and writing in music research using Chicago style. This video will address some common challenges that come up when writing research papers in music, and it's aimed at the undergraduate writer. Specifically, I will talk about how to plan a research paper, how to decide which sources to include, and how to divide your time. I'll talk about the difference between quoting and paraphrasing sources, and what it looks like in the text of a paper. I'll address how to incorporate musical examples in the text of a paper, and I'll speak about the differences between footnotes and a bibliography, as both of these are used in Chicago style. In advance of working on a research paper, it can be extremely helpful to plan out your time. Obviously, you'll want to leave some wiggle room in case something takes longer than expected, but nothing can be more stressful than trying to write an entire research paper with only a couple days before the due date. One strategy is to think of dividing your time into thirds. One third of your time is going to be taken up searching for sources on your topic and reading or skimming them to make sure they're relevant. As part of this step, you may do some note taking or highlighting jotting down any important points that you might want to incorporate into your paper at a later time. Make sure you also record the page numbers and where these passages are in the source, as you'll need those for your footnotes and to find that passage again. The second step of this planning process is devoted to writing and incorporating sources into your paper. You'll need to have a balance of your own words and thoughts, as well as the ideas of reputable authors in your field. The third section of this process is devoted to editing and proofreading. This is a critical step where you'll probably realize you need to fill in some holes in the text of your paper or realize that you've repeated yourself one too many times. The more revisions you make, the better your paper will become. You may want to read your paper out loud, a practice that can help to clarify your ideas and highlight grammatical errors. You'll also want to check that all your citations and references are formatted according to the citation style you've chosen. A simple Google search will lead you to some of the many guides out there to help with formatting citations. When you're considering the types of sources to include in your paper, you will want to take a critical lens. Not all sources are reliable or suited to your topic or purpose. Research articles are typically based off of the work of others in that they reference primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. The sources that you choose show the reader that you are knowledgeable in the topic because you're aware of the surrounding scholarly conversation. When you choose sources on a topic, you are able to demonstrate that you can make a link to the research that has come before you. However, in your paper, the conclusions that you draw from these sources should be your own thoughts and ideas. A research paper is never just a regurgitation of others' ideas. Be sure to add context when you introduce each source. There should always be a reason why you've included it. When you include reliable and reputable sources in your paper, this indicates to the reader that you have carefully considered your topic. Finally, when you cite your sources clearly, this is a way of attribution and respect. As well, in the case of papers submitted as part of a course, it's a way of avoiding plagiarism. Sources might be incorporated into your paper in one of three ways, by quoting, by paraphrasing, or by summarizing. When you're using quotations, you're going to use the author's exact words placed inside quotation marks. A quote typically uses a narrow excerpt from the source. As I mentioned previously, you'll accompany the quote with an introductory statement or setup that explains the significance of the quote itself. You need to give the reader some context and make sure that the quote isn't hanging on its own in the paper. Paraphrasing is a way of using the ideas of the source, but putting it into your own words. When you're paraphrasing, you should make sure that none of the text of the source is duplicated in your paper. You've got to find a new way to say the same idea. Usually when you're paraphrasing, your words will be shorter than the original excerpt that you're citing. Finally, another way of incorporating the ideas of another author are to summarize. When you do this, you put their main ideas into your own words. In this case, your writing will be significantly shorter than the original source. Sometimes, for example, you'll be summarizing just the main conclusions of the journal article or book chapter. Most importantly, whether you are quoting, paraphrasing, or summarizing, you should always cite the author of the original source. 
There should never be any doubt as to which ideas are yours and which are from a different scholar. This is one of the key ways that you can avoid plagiarizing the work of another person. When you want to use the ideas of another author in your paper, you can consider using this formula to get at the key ideas of their work. This is an important process for fully understanding another scholar's work while finding the key ideas that you might want to reference in your own writing. The first step would be to read or skim the text, noting the key points and main ideas. Next, you can summarize in your own words the overarching idea behind the text. Next, you can paraphrase supporting points in your own words. Finally, you'll want to consider whether there are any words or short passages that you think should be quoted directly. Your research paper is likely to contain a combination of direct quotes and paraphrased or summarized ideas. Here is an example of a quoted source in the context of a research paper that uses footnotes in Chicago style. As you can see, the section here highlighted in yellow is a direct quote, which is evident because it's surrounded by quotation marks. The writer has set up this quote in their own words, which you can see highlighted in blue. This introduction orients the reader so that we understand why the quote is significant and how it ties into the paper. Finally, you'll see that there is a reference number after the quote, which leads to the shortened citation at the bottom of the page. In this next example, there are examples of both quoted text and paraphrased text. You can see highlighted in yellow the words best pupil have been cited from the original source. In this case, the quote is just a couple words used for emphasis to illustrate a particular point about Gershwin and who he was as a student. The text that I've highlighted in green gives us the background story behind those quoted words. In the earlier paragraph, you can see there's an example of a paraphrased reference highlighted in purple. The text from the original source conveys the same idea but in a longer and more detailed way. In this example here, the writer has provided a condensed version of the same ideas and fit them into the overall arc of the paper. In both the cases of the quoted text and the paraphrased text, there is a citation to the original source in the footnote at the bottom of the page. In papers on musical topics, you're probably going to need to include some musical excerpts. As with quoted text, ideally there will be a short excerpt and it will be a few bars or so of music. For every musical excerpt, you should label your image with a numbering system. In this example, the excerpt is labeled 7.2a, and you should then title your excerpt in a way where you succinctly describe what it is. Um, as you'll see in purple, this example is labeled with the name of the composer, the title of the piece, and then the text transition to the first variation, which describes the musical technique that's being highlighted here. Finally, your musical example should include a complete reference to the score, including the title of the piece, the composers, the year of publication, and the publisher. As you did with quoted text, you should always include an explanation in your paper that leads into the musical excerpt, or explains why you included it. This explanation is highlighted here in red in the example on the screen. You can refer readers to the example by including the example number in brackets at the appropriate point in the text, as seen here highlighted in yellow. You can include the image of the musical example in between any two paragraphs, either before or after the relevant text. If possible, make sure the reader doesn't have to flip to another page to find your musical example. Music research papers are often formatted using the Chicago Manual of Style. Chicago uses a notes and bibliography system, which means that footnotes are included on each page where there is a reference. And there's also a bibliography at the end of the paper that includes all the cited sources. The way that footnotes and bibliography entries are formatted are slightly different. As you can see here, bibliography entries are written like a series of separate sentences with periods after each element. Full footnotes contain the same information as a bibliography, but with the addition of page numbers at the end. And they're formatted as if they are one sentence with commas after each element. If a source has already been referenced once in the paper, 
then the subsequent footnotes are formatted in a short format, including only the last name of the author, a shorter version of the title, and the page numbers. It's often easier to understand the rules of citing and formatting when you're able to see a sample paper, so I've provided one here. In this example, you can see there are three footnotes at the end of the page. The first note appears in the full format, using commas after each element. The subsequent footnote is highlighted in pink, and it's a shortened note because this source was actually cited in full earlier in the paper. And finally, the last note highlighted in purple is citing the Kendall source right above. If you have two notes that are back to back from the same source, then you can simply write the abbreviation IBID, followed by the page number. Formatting papers in this way can take time at first, and it can sometimes seem overly complicated. So give yourself some extra time to make sure you've got it right, and it will get easier with practice. I highly recommend reading some sample papers to see how formatting appears on the page. Here are some helpful resources that you can use to learn more about citing, formatting, and writing using Chicago style. The Chicago Quick Guide includes examples of how to cite different types of sources in full note, short note, and bibliography style. The OWL Purdue website is a great source for anything related to citing. They have a section on how to cite in Chicago style, including a sample paper. The Short Guide to Writing About Music by Bellman has examples of how to incorporate musical examples into a research paper. It also has a sample paper and some examples of how to cite musical sources using Chicago style. Finally, the Chicago Style Guide for Music is a USASC resource that gives examples of how to cite music sources in Chicago style for a bibliography. It can be very difficult to remember all the rules of citing, and turning to a help page or a guide can save you a lot of time. This video included a summary of some of the best practices for planning your writing process, an introduction to citing and paraphrasing, some examples of how to include musical examples in the text of a paper, and some examples of how to format footnotes and bibliographies in Chicago style.